Hey guys, so this is Ben. I'm just, uh, this is my first time doing this on YouTube. I'm just broadcasting myself because uh, I, I want to go into broadcasting one day. And um, I already have a blog on Blogspot called the uh, Hockey Newscast. Um, I'm into hockey, if you couldn't tell. Not really any other sports, just hockey. Maybe CFL football a little bit, but mostly hockey. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to be talking about the death of um, Rick Rippin. Uh, and that, as of now, that happened about, uh, because it's about 2.30 on uh, Thursday, August 18th, 2.30 a.m., um, and Rippin was found dead in his home about uh, 38 hours ago at about 12.30 p.m. Mountain Time um, on Tuesday uh, afternoon, uh, August 16th. And so, um, obviously, he was probably dead a few hours before that because um, he was actually, because he signed, he was with the Vancouver Canucks and then he signed with the Winnipeg Jets. And he was supposed to board a plane on Sunday night to um, go to Winnipeg. And then he was going to get his leg checked out there on Monday. But he never actually got on that flight. And uh, so Craig Heisinger, who was expecting him, uh, he is the assistant general manager of the Winnipeg Jets and the former general manager of the Manitoba Moose, uh, which, which is where um, Rippon played his minor league hockey. And so he said that he tried to track him down that day a little bit, and he couldn't um, find out where he was or anything. And um, and and yeah, then they found him dead in his home. And so uh, what Heisinger also said, apparently he knew him pretty well, is that he was battling depression at this point for at least a decade. And and so I guess that kind of suggests suicide. But I think that would have been released by now if it was. I think the RCMP would have said something, and they're not treating this case, uh, they're not treating it suspiciously. Um, and so, um, yeah, and it's kind of rattling because only 95 days before Rippon was found, Bugard, Derek Bugard, the um, former, I believe at that point he was a ranger, but he was best known in Minnesota when he was kind of the goon there doing all the fighting and stuff, and so um, the original suspicion there was that uh, he he had just taken a lot of headshots, and it was just kind of all this damage to the brain, and he just collapsed, but it turned out that it was actually just a combination of alcohol and um, uh, some painkillers. So, yeah, it's kind of rattling, because fewer than 100 days apart, you find two guys just dead in their homes and it kind of sucks um and uh, especially because um jason jaffrey his former teammate in vancouver ripon's former teammate in vancouver said that um said, said that he he was pretty excited to go to winnipeg back to winnipeg since he played his junior hockey in manitoba he was excited to go back there and um that well and that's one of the reasons why i don't think that it was suicide because it just it just doesn't seem like the right situation for it, I guess, if you were going to do that. Um, and and so, yeah, um, so that's what Heisinger said, that's what Jaffrey said, and uh, what Jason Jaffrey also said, because he was his roommate, uh, Rippon's roommate in Vancouver, um, he said that if if it was something about depression, then he definitely really kept that to himself because he hardly talked about it, and um, the guys around him they didn't uh, they didn't try to get it out of him. They didn't try to pry it out of him because um, that apparently made him uncomfortable. So um, whatever it was, he kind of was trying to battle it himself, um, and uh, now he's gone. And. Uh, just it's it sucks it sucks for everybody i mean yeah so um yeah so like i said this is my first time doing this um uh your comments would be greatly appreciated um video responses subscriptions whatever uh, you can check out my blog too uh the hockey newscast on blogspot.com um i'm going to be posting a link down there so um yeah, it would be great to just uh, hear your feedback, and uh, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.